It gives me great pleasure to introduce Harlan Sten, who is presenting Network Time Foundation Status Update, the NTP, Linux PTP, Lib PTP Management, Kronos, and Sync E projects. Harlan is President and Project Manager at the Network Time Foundation. This is Harlan's second Nanog presentation, and we're excited to welcome him back to the stage. Howdy, and thank you. And there are no notes on this one. Uh, I'm the NTP project manager. I'm not the president of the NTP project. Not a huge deal. So this slide tells a bit about my history and how Network Time Foundation came to be. It's in the online presentation slides anyway, and since I asked for a short slot, I'm not going to bother to read through it or anything. I believe you all are at least aware of NTP, and the Linux PTP project's goal is to be the best performing PTP software under the most recent version of the Linux kernel. LibPTP Management Project is a type length value management and monitoring library uh, for Linux PTP in particular, but it's supposed to be usable for a number of similar related efforts, and we're going to do our best to make sure it's as generally useful as possible in that regard. We're spinning up three different Sync E projects, and uh, there are three different companies. There are three companies that are working on their own projects that are all umbrella at NTF. And I don't care that there are three of them. I wouldn't care if there are five. This is about cooperation and collaboration and advancing the state of of uh, tools and fun things like that. As long as everybody plays nice, that's lovely. The Kronos Project's goal is to deliver pro ongoing provably bounded time uh, with the intent to prevent time shifting attacks. I do want to talk about Kronos first because it'll likely affect at least NTP and PTP, and the folks who are working on Kronos have some ideas on what the threats are, how to detect them, and how to mitigate them. Other folks are concerned about some of the proposed detection and mitigation plans that Kronos is planning to use because they're unworkable. I'm confident that we can come up with solutions that'll work for everybody involved. We do have 23 bug fixes staged for P18 as of Monday the 9th. I'm told there are several more waiting for me as soon as I can get logged in again. Uh, and there will be even more after that. We're actively interested in identifying DDoS and abuse vectors involving NTP. And I talked to somebody just the other day who is undergoing, uh, who's the recipient of what looks like uh, a DDoS attack based on NTP. Just using NTP as a DDoS vector because people can forge a UDP source address and then send queries out and have the answers flood in is a general DDoS attack. It's, it's not in the same category as someone who's trying to attack your NTP servers or something like that. And we're very interested in looking at this and understanding it because we've got some ideas in the pipeline that we are, that I think will help mitigate this a whole lot. We just got to get there. And you will notice what this stuff says is pretty much how we're trying to deal with all that. And uh, the key element there is the fourth one down. To make this happen, we're looking for both funding and initial partners. Uh, once we get it going, we'll have pretty slides and we'll be able to uh, get, show people results and volume numbers and how much better or worse it's getting and fun things like that. Uh, this is just about the Linux PTP project, and that's all well and good. Uh, Richard Cochran has decided to go to a quarterly release schedule, and uh, why did it do that? Oh, good. That seems really strange. It's showing me Linux PTP project, but it's just showing DDoS mitigation. There we go. Okay. Um, 
uh, Richard Cochran is going to a quarterly release schedule, so his next release is the 5th of December. And I expect, uh, just to back up a bit, P8, NTP P18 should be coming out in a few weeks. As I mentioned, the libptp management effort uh, is, is a TLV library, and it looks it's doing well, and we're very pleased that the guy who wrote it got inline documentation into everything. So every single file and class and things he's using is documented in there. Depending on what goes on, we may I may talk to him about renaming it to the um, to the lib time TLV project. It depends on whether or not the effort is really geared toward PTP or if there are other time-related things, even NTP, where we might be able to use TLB and a library to uh, interface and manage all of it. Uh, the Synky projects are just coming up, as I mentioned. We've got Sync ED from Renaissance and uh, the Sync ESMC from Sync Monk, and there's a project coming up from Intel and a lot of these things will get announced as we, as the lawyers stop talking to each other and decide everything is safe for an open source project that you know companies of various sizes are going to be working on together. Um, the website will have more information as soon as we have it. The other fun things and what we're looking for are you know, pretty much up there, and I'm assuming you guys can all read, so I'm not going to bother going through it. There's tons of stuff to do, and if you want to help, we'd love to have the assistance. So, uh, to close up, this was designed to be a summary. If you guys want to hear more about it in the future, let us know. If you want anything different, more or less, please tell me. And before I go into questions, um, there was something I was going to mention. The biggest problem people have with NTP is they don't have enough sources of time. And people seem to think that there's something extra special and magical about how they can drive their entire enterprise because they query one time server somewhere out on the net. And they decide that's lovely until it isn't. And then they think, well, maybe I should have two or three or four. And if you use the pool directive in your config files, you're going to get 10. And every poll interval, it's going to go ahead and see if anybody sucks. And it's going to throw those away, and it's going to solicit new servers. Uh, there are under 14, at a standard poll interval, there's under 1,400 minutes in a day. And an NTP packet is kind of short. So in a 24-hour period, grabbing 100k bytes worth of data isn't much when you consider that somebody may have downloaded a movie during that time. So this, this desire to go ahead and be as minimally impactful as possible doesn't make a whole lot of sense if, if you're really interested in keeping your clock synchronized. So that was the first, you know, why does my first guess at somebody's question about what can we do to make NTP behave better? have enough sources of time. And I see somebody standing right here who must have a question. Good morning, Harlan, John Brown, Team Cymru. Not so much a question, but just a piece of data for you. Please. Uh, with regards to DDoS and your investigations and research there, uh, there's a gentleman in Berlin named Christian Razo, Roscoe or something like that. I have the specifics. But he runs a project called AmpPot which is an amplification pot, honeypot type of an environment, and has some very unique real-time data showing uh, amplification and similar types of attacks uh, using either DNS or NTP. It might be useful for you and him to have a beer virtually. I would. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Please, no if, if, if you don't hear from me in a day or so... Re reach out. I'll be happy to do the intro. Or preempt and email me. <laughs> I can do that, too. Thank you much. Anybody else? Wow, that was easy. All right, thanks so much. <laughs>